unlock this door with the key of imagination. Beyond it is another dimension. A dimension of sound. A dimension of sight. A dimension of mind. You're moving into a land of both shadow and substance, of things and ideas. You've just crossed over into the Twilight Zone. Hello, everyone. and Welcome back to the Man Cave. Today we're going to be looking at the latest machine in the Man Cave, the Twilight Zone. And uh, in case you haven't noticed, uh, in between Indiana Jones and Playboy used to be Lethal Weapon 3, but, uh, oh, I wish I had a basement like uh, some of you gents do back in the, uh, the East Coast, but uh, no basement, just a garage, so I'm kind of limited on space. So we had to sell the Lethal Weapon. It ended up going to a good home in Florida, and I picked up the Twilight Zone by uh, Bally and Midway. So uh, a little bit about the machine. Uh, I'm going to be talking about it. I'm going to be showing you some of the mods and talking about some of the problems that I had with this machine. Now, uh, Twilight Zone was released in 1993, and they, uh, I believe they released a little over 15,000 units. And it falls on the heels of the Adams Family, which was also a Valley game, and uh, that I think they released over 20,000 units. But the gentleman, Pat Lawler, who designed this machine, had such a good success with Adams Family that uh, the company gave him the green light. And this machine probably has more toys and uh, modifications you can do than any that I've seen. Now, uh, this machine, it's actually kind of awesome because I used to play this machine at the Westminster uh, Bowling Alley in Westminster, California. Uh, I'm on a bowling league and this machine used to be on route there. Uh, one of the owners uh, had it and uh, in fact, here it is at the bowling alley. I used to play that machine all the time, and uh, Twilight Zone's kind of spendy. Some of the machines are uh, a little cheaper and some of them are more expensive, and Twilight Zone is the number one uh, rated video machine on the International Pinball Database. Number one in the world. It's very, very, very popular, but uh, man, they, they, run, they run expensive. But in this particular machine, it kept shutting down. And uh, the gentleman pulled it off route, and he had it in his warehouse, and it just wasn't making any money for him. And I had uh, bought another machine from the same gent that uh, I actually used to play in a different bowling alley, the Valley View Lanes, which was uh, Indiana Jones. And he had sold me that uh, quite a few years ago. And I kept saying, if you ever want to sell the Twilight Zone, uh, keep me in mind. Well, the problem was it kept resetting. so. He finally gave it to me at a really good price, and I brought it home to see what I could do. Now, the problem with these machines, the number one problem, is they put the battery back up to keep the high scores and uh, uh, keep the memory factory, or all the settings that you've programmed, on the board that goes behind the back glass. And what happens is these AA, or AA batteries, three of them, they start to leak. And that was the case with this machine. So take a look. Here's what the battery board or the battery holder looked like on this machine. So what I did is I ended up changing that board first thing, uh, removing that bad battery board and putting it in a new board that holds a lithium watch battery to hold the memory. And uh, I got this one from, I think, TNT Amusements back in Philadelphia. Uh, they sell them online. So, uh, in fact, uh, here's what it looked like after. So, I figured that would be the first thing I would look at. I figured I was going to have to change the bridge rectifiers, go through this machine, and that's what the owner thought. But what, it looked good. I mean, everything looked good, but it started resetting on me about every five minutes. And even in the, in the attract mode like this, it would just start resetting on me. So, it turned out but some of that acid had leaked down the board and into one of the chips, the uh, uh, voltage regulating chips. And from the top looking at it, everything looked good. But when I pulled the chip, here's what it looked like. I mean, that 
was it, it just just ate that chip apart. So I ended up putting in a new chip, a, a socket, a new chip, and lo and behold, the reset problem stopped. So I ended up going through the entire machine. Uh, uh, it was uh, pretty grimy, and I'm going to be showing you a video of what it what I went through through the restoration. So if uh, you're interested, stick around. You can see the evolution of this machine. Uh, all I had to go through before uh, I got it the way I wanted it, all the mods that are on it, some of the uh, references that are on the machine to some of the Twilight Zone episodes. And uh, I'll even put in a commercial for the original, uh, the original advertising for this machine when it came out in 1993. So uh, stick around and thanks for watching. You unlock this door with the key of imagination. Beyond it is another dimension. A dimension of sound. A dimension of sight. A dimension of mind. You're moving into a land of both shadow and substance. Of things and ideas. You've just crossed over into the Twilight Zone. Submitted for your approval, a machine. Conceived of and born in Chicago by some men with a passion for gadgets. Electric gadgets, the kind that can freeze a ball in its path or hurl one at breakneck speed across time and space. This group of men, this design team, you've met before. For years, they've concocted kinetic plans for profit. Always with massive success. From the lucrative rumblings of Earthshaker to the whirlwind windfall. From Rudy's little world to this uniquely attractive family, they have brought you wildly popular coin collectors head and shoulders above what we will loosely term as, for purposes of this presentation, competition. Many have wondered what would come next. Whatever it is, it will certainly make obsolete everything that's come before. Each new machine that comes from this team betters each earlier effort. Average first-year ratings for all their games surpasses the best of what the competition has to offer. And players continue to flock to these games years after they've abandoned everything else. Case in point, Earthshaker has remained on the operator's list of favorite games since it was unveiled more than three years ago. These are the spirits who populate this machine. They belong to a distinguished order, where things are never quite as they seem, where reality is stretched and tempered, turned on its ear by the relentless tug of blind fate. Consider, for example, this old woman, visited one night by strange little feisty beings who have traveled across the galaxy only to see the business end of a hatchet. Or Mr. Henry Bemis, a bookish bookworm with glasses thick enough to roast ants, Soon, a conspiracy against Mr. Bemis and his love for the printed page will end. And another will begin. He's about to enter a world without wives, bank presidents, or anything else. It's a smashed landscape offering nothing but time. That's not fair. That's not fair at all. And here is Nan Adams, a woman on a cross-country trip to California which ends before it begins. Her route, fear. Her destination, quite unknown. I believe you're going my way. Finally, consider Mr. Franklin Gibbs, a stoic conservative Kansan on an all-expense-paid trip to Las Vegas. In a few minutes, Mr. Gibbs will succumb to an illness, worse than any virus can produce. It's a deadly, life-shattering affliction known as the fever. In a moment, you'll have a chance to enter their world of sound and fury. It's a great little vacation spot to which you've just been given a one-way ticket. Welcome one and all to the Twilight Zone. You're looking at a clock on a playfield. It's 12 noon, a quiet hour in a world about to be shattered.
These are the things of reality, of physical substance. A piano, a slot machine, a door, a camera, an unknown. They exist and have dimension. But in a few seconds, we will see how thin a line separates that which we assume to be real from that manufactured inside of a mind. The piano will play, the reels on the slot machine will spin, and the camera will take pictures of things yet to come. You still don't know what this will do. Submit it for your approval. The future. This is a gumball machine. In the upper left corner of this playfield of the future, it dispenses balls, ordinary pinballs. But a twist of this knob and a twist of fate will set free this little character, the Powerball. Return it to the gumball machine to collect the points you've earned. You unlock this door with the key of imagination. Around it lie 14 features which await your activation. The hitchhiker, the camera, greed, to name a few. You collect these features with shots to the player piano or the slot machine. Your allotted time is marked with our clock. This door is also your key to a battle with the power, staged here and presented by MagnaFlip. Pressing the flipper buttons will activate the force under these spirals. Send a ball through the hole and you've defeated the power. If multi-ball is what you're after, you must first make both these ramps. Balls sent here will then lock. Three locks makes multi-ball, and multi-ball makes points. Should you progress this far, your next concern will no doubt be collecting a jackpot. This you'll be able to achieve with a shot across the upper playfield to the piano. An introduction of a game, one that causes its own affliction, its own fever. Just ask Mr. Franklin Gibbs. He's not in Kansas anymore. Gizmos and gadgets designed to probe a mystery, to fathom a depth, to entrance, congregate, and collect. Fact and fantasy, substance and shadow. It's the pinnacle of our craft, and all of it remains to be seen, presenting the Twilight Zone. Hey, we got two I got my brother over here in his red car, or red truck, and I got the SUV, and we're picking up two pinball machines today. Twilight Zone for me, and theater magic for my brother. There he is. I don't know if you guys can see back there, but there is the Twilight Zone pinball machine in the back of the SUV, heading back towards the man cave. It is just gross. No wonder the play field gets dirty. So I'm gonna clean this off in the sink. It'll do. Does not even look like the same piece of plastic. Just a piece of plastic. 
So now we've cleaned the subway troughs that run underneath the play field and hopefully those sensors and switches will work a lot smoother now that that is done. The clock is out and we're working on that now also. just got the clock reassembled. We drilled the holes in there and I've got the new board in. You can see I've got that in. The thing is is the gears are a little noisy but they have not been run in years so I believe if they work don't mess with them. I'm hoping that they'll just work their way in. I'm gonna have to remove that plastic there and put on this new piece but we've got the gumballs in and that's working fantastic. So far Everything that was broken is now working. through but it can't come back. That's the part number. She is all finished, and do you recognize that topper? See if you can recognize what episodes the artwork relates to. Hope you enjoyed watching, and that is the Twilight Zone Kimball machine. There's a lot of sites out there that you can go to and see how this game is played. I just wanted to show you some of the mods.
All right. Well, thanks again for watching. I really appreciate it. I, I hope, uh, you know, you're a little bit entertained. I hope you kind of can see some cool mods that you can put on this. Uh, there's probably some items on the back, uh, back glass that I missed originally talking about. I mean, you see the masks from that one Twilight Zone episode where they put the masks on and their face changed the mask. That's all back there. It's just got a, just a big jumble of uh, scenes from the Twilight Zone episodes. All right. Well, thanks very much for watching. Thanks for spending an afternoon in the man cave with me. And uh, right now, I think I'm going to start this up and play a game. So until next time, it's Ken Surf saying, have a great night.